Okay, hi everyone. As some of you may know, June 27th is Canadian Multiculturalism Day. And in light of that, PACE in jointly with TV Metro Mail is hosting this program, Diversity Delight, so that I, along with some of my friends can discuss our perspectives and experiences with multiculturalism. And so shortly, me and my friends will be talking about our cultural backgrounds and how it's affected how we navigate life. But before I do that, I should probably introduce myself my name is Nadia. I'm a Bangladeshi Canadian, and I've grown up in Toronto my entire life, and I'm currently a civil engineering student at U of T. So now I'm going to pass it off to my friends to introduce themselves and their cultural backgrounds. Um, Yasaman, do you want to start us off? Okay, hi, my name is Yasaman, and I'm a Persian Canadian. I moved to Canada in 2013, and I'm currently a civil engineering student at the University of Toronto. That's it. Okay, perfect. Bo, do you want to introduce yourself? Cool. Uh, hi, my name is Bo. I'm a Chinese Canadian. Canadian. I moved to Canada when I was uh, when it was like 2008, and uh, I'm also studying civil engineering with Nadia and Yasman. Okay. Um... Awesome. I'm not sure if Aditya, if you're able to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop off. Okay, while we wait for Aditya to join, uh, Travis, you want to introduce yourself? Oh, of course. Uh, hi, my name's Travis. Um, I'm white and Jewish. I'm from the United States. I came here for school to join Nadia, and Yasmin, and Bo for uh, civil engineering at U of T. And uh, so I've only been here for two years now. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. All right, awesome. Back to you, Aditya. Hey, everyone. I'm Aditya, and uh, I'm an Indian Canadian. And uh, I'm also in the same program as uh, Yasmin and Nadia. I'm in the civil engineering program at UFT. And I moved to Canada in 2014. Okay, amazing. Um, Naomi, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi. So my name's Naomi. I'm a Chinese Canadian who was born and raised in Canada my whole life. And currently I study in the UK. Um, I study medicine and I moved there two years ago to start that. Amazing. Okay, Anish, do you wanna go next? Sure. So hi everyone, my name's Anish. I am half Elam Tamil, half Rajasthani, and I study finance and economics at McGill University, born and raised in Toronto. Okay, uh, Vanessa. Uh, hi, I'm Vanessa. So I'm from Hong Kong, but I moved to Canada when I was five. And now I'm an ECE student at the University of Toronto. Amazing. Okay, Soiba, do you want to go next? Hi, I'm Soiba. I was born in Bangladesh and I moved to Canada when I was six years old. And then I've lived everywhere in Canada, basically. And now I'm in Edmonton studying computer science. Okay, Noor, do you want to go next? Hi, so I'm Noor. Um, I moved from U.S. to here um, in 2016. I study biochemistry at U of A. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Amazing. And last but not least, Angelin. Hi, my name is uh, Angelin. I, I'm sorry, I identify as Tamil Canadian. And um, I moved from Sri Lanka when I was two to Canada and basically just lived in the greater Toronto area ever since. Amazing. Okay, thank you guys for those introductions and thank you for joining me today. So before we get into some specific questions, some things I just wanna hear your thoughts on where what multiculturalism means to you. The formal definition is of course the presence of people from diverse ethnic and cultural backgrounds, but how has that affected your life? What value do you see in multiculturalism? And Bo, if you wanna come back on, um, I know you have some thoughts on it. Well, um, for me, multiculturalism means the ability to, I think, pursue my, my life towards what, whatever way I, I guess I want to without feeling like I need to drop like the core identity of myself. Uh, an example would be like um, my hobby of playing a Chinese instrument called the Chinese bow fiddle or arhu in Mandarin. And I th I think that like with the multiculturalism uh, culturalism culture that we have, uh, it, when I talk about 
talk about this hobby of mine. People are very excited and want to like listen about it. Yeah. That's great. I'm glad you're able to practice your culture in such a creative way. Anish, do you wanna, do you have anything to contribute? Yeah, for sure. It's not just about, I think, having people from different backgrounds in one particular community. It's about celebrating and being able to share our different cultural backgrounds and different practices that we have um, on a variety of different scales. And uh, for example, in high school, we had people, or I was friends with people from Hong Kong, and I was also friends with people from uh, Sri Lanka and India, and we definitely were able to uh, enjoy some of the different festivals that we had, like Chinese New Year um, or Pongal and stuff like that. So it was definitely great to engage and interact with the different parts of the world that we wouldn't necessarily have um, visited in our entire lives. Yeah, we definitely came from a very diverse school, and I was appreciative of like that exposure, for sure. Vanessa, do you have anything to add? Oh, for sure. I feel like like I went to the same school as Anish, so I had many of the same experiences. So I feel like we're fortunate to get that here in Canada because it's good to learn about different cultures and gain different perspectives from people. Amazing. Thank you. So I bet you mentioned that you've basically lived everywhere in Canada and that's like great exposure to have. Have you do you feel like that's um, impacted like how you value multiculturalism? Um, it's affected my identity a lot. Most of my identity is not Bangladeshi or how my parents view culture. It's affected by all the friends that I've met and they're all from different cultural backgrounds. So yeah. Okay, amazing. and. Uh, perhaps like the last thought we can have on this, um, Angel, and do you have anything to add about how multiculturalism adds value to your life? Oh, definitely. I think I agree with Saiba in that like meeting different people from different backgrounds definitely plays a role in like developing your own identity as well. Like, um, I think the friends that I've made, like I also came from a very, um, like I went to the same high school as you, so I came from a very like diverse uh, crowd and it's really interesting to see um, different struggles that you face as a student as well, like through the lens of different communities. Um, and I think that's a really interesting fact, especially when I came to university, which is um, U of T is also a very diverse crowd. So you get that same exposure and that's amazing. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, so some of you mentioned bridging off of some of your experiences that not all of us grew up or currently live in the GTA. And I think we sometimes make the mistake of thinking that everywhere is like Toronto or everywhere is like Canada. So I think I thought it would be interesting to hear from those of you that grew up elsewhere or currently live elsewhere. Did you grow up in a diverse area? Does Did it like affect your view of multiculturalism? It, does it, does the way that cultures interact in these different places different? So, um, Noor, you, Swaiba and you live in Alberta. Do you find it different than where you lived previously in America, for example? Um, so I didn't mention this, but I was a Yemeni, so it's kind of different from my perspective as a Yemeni living in Canada. So Alberta was kind of like a, it's not, I see it as a different as like compared to Toronto, because Toronto has more like, I would say more people of my kind, like more Yemenis that I would see here. So it's like, I'm not really exposed to any difference. Like there's no cultural shock yet because I haven't seen Yemenis like me who are like struggling with the, you know, blending in and all that. So yeah, I'm just kind of taking in the different cultures, not mine really, but yeah. Yeah, it's great that you're being exposed to that, um, but it is kind of a struggle not to see yourself represented in your peers. I definitely relate to that. Um, Yasaman, you have a unique experience in that you lived in Iran for most of your life and then you moved to Canada later. Was there any difference in like multiculturalism between those two countries? Uh, I think it's, it was a really shocking experience for me because up until when I moved to Canada, in Iran you're really introduced to three different races, which is like brown, white, and then like East Asian, but it's like grouped in one section. So when I, 
I remember when I landed in Canada for like the first time, I saw so many different kinds of people and that was like a really big shock to me. But then at the same time, again, I was isolated because I went to a white middle school and it wasn't until I came to high school that I really got that exposure. But my high school was located in an area which was in the middle of a neighborhood that was um, mostly Persian, uh, people from Philippines and a lot of East Asian countries. And I just remember going to our talent shows and they were like one of the best times of the year because we got to see everyone's different cultures and everyone was really into that. But I do think it is a really big culture shock when you come here and get introduced to things because personally, I know like Iran is a little bit more um, censored than Canada is. So coming and trying to adjust to that was obviously a really big step. But overall, I feel like at least the communities I was a part of were really welcoming in trying to help me adjust to this big change. And I'm just really grateful that during that process, there was never any pressure for me to want to change because I feel like comparing to other countries that people immigrate to, some people are kind of forced to change their identity, but in Canada and in the areas I have grown up in, a lot of people are very welcoming and okay with just whoever you are. So I think that's a great experience compared to other places. I'm glad you've had that experience and I'm glad you found it welcoming when you came here. Aditya, you've had a similar experience to Yasman in that I feel, I think you've moved here when you were 2014. Do you wanna share what that was like for you? If you experienced any culture shock there? Yeah, definitely. I um, I really, I, I feel like Yasman's experiences and mine are pretty similar in the fact that uh, like diversity was a thing in my country and it was more, I would say, in terms of like people from different states, I guess, provinces in, in a, from a Canadian standpoint. But I think that th the one thing that really shocked me was um, like I know living in India that like th there are people they foster, I wouldn't say hate, but sort of microaggressions towards uh, other cultures and sort of some judgments which people make. But coming to Canada and like interacting with all of the different cultures, I feel that it was completely wrong and it just expanded my worldview and to, to people of different cultures and celebrating them. So it was really interesting. No, I definitely relate to like being stuck in a microcosm and like not realizing that um, there's a lot more benefit to being introduced to people of a different cultures. So I'm glad you were able to experience that. Um, Travis, if you want to come back on, I wanted to ask you, because you've lived in the U.S. for, I think, most of your life, but you go to university at U of T, which is obviously in Toronto. Do you see any differences in how multiculturalism is viewed, between, like, across the border? Well, um, I grew up mostly in Brooklyn, which was very diverse, but it was a I feel like it was a different kind of diverse than Canada is. And I still, now I live in Connecticut, but I still go back home. I was there two weeks ago. But I feel like in Brooklyn, it's different because in, in Canada, the diversity is very intertwined, if that makes sense. Like it, well, in Brooklyn, there were certain neighborhoods where certain people would live. It wasn't like set that way, but it's kind of just how it ended up. And here I like it a lot more because everyone lives with each other. You... You get to you get to mingle with each other, and I've I've learned a lot, and it's helped out a lot because especially in Connecticut, where I went to high school, it was very white. So I grew up with a lot of multiculturalism. Then it kind of got taken away from me, and now I've I've kind of gotten it back at U of T, which is kind of nice. I I really enjoy it. I'm glad you were uh, able to get that multiculturalism back to you. And I I kind of understand, I've never lived in the US, but just from visiting, I kind of understand that like difference in how it's viewed in that Canada is more of a mosaic while America is a lot of like a cultural melting pot, which I think is really interesting. It, it's um, especially like that in New York City, I feel like. It just didn't. I don't think so. Alberta no. sounds a lot like how you described the U.S. Like, for example, even here in high school, even though I feel like kids are more tolerant of other cultures, here even friend groups and stuff just interact with mostly their people. Like even Noor and I, most of our friend group, 
was just other Muslim Arab brown people and not a lot of other people. People here don't interact that much. That's an interesting perspective. And I do see that in like different, even in different places in Toronto, a lot of people kind of stick with their own groups. It's a lot easier to not expose yourself to different perspectives or people, um, especially when that's all you know. Um, maybe to wrap up this question, uh, Naomi, I think your experience is also really unique in the fact that you grew up in Canada most of your life. You grew up in Toronto. So, but then you go to school in the UK. Have you seen any differences there? Um, yeah, for sure. Like I do have a very unique perspective and um, in a sense it was somewhat of a shock, although what's like very unique, even for people who study in the UK who are like from Canada or are an international student in general, is that my school, um, the program that I'm in mainly accepts a lot of international students. So a lot of the interactions I have um, actually remind me a lot of being back in Canada and being exposed to all of that, all of those different cultures and all those different ethnicities. And so um, to sort of add on to what the previous conversation was about people who kind of cluster together based off their ethnicity, that's observed a lot here um, with the international students, like people who are from India, from Dubai, they tend to stick with their friend groups because that's probably just the easiest way. And um, so I find that really interesting. Although um, what what's even more kind of interesting in my opinion is um, I would say in terms of university versus actual exposure to um, like the country as a whole is very different because the younger generations, they are more diverse, they are more mixed together and they are more um, uh, mi mingled together because of that that space, that shared space, right? So um, on in my program, I've been able to go on placements out into the city and be exposed to the community itself. And in that sense, I, I'm also um, interacting with the with the older population, the older generation. And I find in the UK, at least, there are um, mainly the older population is of uh, uh, white UK citizens. Although, uh, so I study in like the north of England. Uh, so in that sense, there are actually um, a lot of people from South Asia who are here as well. And uh, in general, I would say uh, there is definitely, you could definitely see like a difference between the young generation and the older generation when you look at their cultures. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting how, like you mentioned, it's not just like a cultural divide, there's an intergenerational divide in differences in views on multiculturalism, which I think is really interesting. Um, I just wanted to add quick, so um, in addition to Suwaiba's and also Naomi's uh, point of view, I realized that also if if you have a common you know, language with someone, you're more likely to click with them than if you don't. So it's like your languages or the amount of language that you speak determine how exposed you are to other people or like how willing you to expose you are, you know? Right, I completely understand what you, uh, where you're coming from. U of T is like a really, uh, we have a lot of international students as well. Um, so there's definitely barriers when there's a language barrier. So getting to know them gets a little harder. So that cultural in-grouping is kind of like exacerbated. Um, I think we can go to one more question before we go on break. And I just wanted to know, um, on a related note, those of us that grew up as a cultural or ethnic minority, did you ever feel that your background set you apart in either a good or bad way? And as a result of that, did you ever feel the need to distance yourself from your culture? Do you still feel this way? If not, what has changed? Bo, do you want to start us off? Yeah, um, I think in a good way with regards to, I guess, being Chinese, uh, I guess, uh, with like with my cultural background, um, my parents instilled like the the first principles was um, hard work and like using that to be able to pursue and get what you want in life. Um, but then the kind of flip side of that coin in the negative aspect is that um, at the same time while you're using that hard work ability, you kind of have to suck it up and not complain at all. You, you, you like. Um, 
I know in the construction industry, um, a lot of those contractors have a stereotype that Chinese people are very hardworking and they don't complain. Um, I think it's it's great to like keep that hardworking aspect, but um, that's what I, I personally am trying to distance away from the the sh the shut up and just sucking it up because if I if I feel like to to be able to get towards like places of leadership or to feel like um we're equal in uh with the rest of the canadians we have to be able to stand up for ourselves yeah no i do think that's like uh super important to talk about like how even seemingly positive stereotypes have negative consequences to them um and just so stereotyping as a whole just tends to be problematic and lead to consequences that affect you even in the workplace, like you mentioned. Um, Anish, do you want to add anything to this question? Okay, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I can definitely add something to this question. So um, having been born and raised in Toronto, um, part of the goal as being personal call is to assimilate into the regional culture. Um, I don't think this is a representative of everyone's perspective, but for me at least, I want to be as Canadian as possible, right? Uh, and so that did involve distancing myself a little bit from being uh, Indian. Being Indian is a very, we definitely have a very large, loud culture, sorry. And so, which is great in its own right, but sometimes I felt as though I wasn't Canadian enough. And when I grew older, I also felt I wasn't Indian enough. And so you're definitely put in this interesting situation where you don't really fit into both worlds. And so what I realized um, having come into university is that it is really worth exploring and engaging with this culture because as we grow old and as more generations are born here, we'll slowly lose that for sure. And it's just something that's inevitable. Um, and so the goal is to be proud of it and to realize that as someone who was born here from immigrant parents, we developed our own sense of identity where we're not quite either one, but that's perfectly okay too. There's a sort of, um, we've created our own world, which I think is quite interesting. We have merged the West and the East. Um, and I think that adds value to our own life perspectives. I definitely understand where you're coming from in that being like um, the children of uh, first generation immigrants, you kind of don't know where you fit. You don't fit. Um, I'm not a complete like a uh, Bangladeshi, but I don't feel completely Canadian either. So you're put in this weird middle ground and especially in those formative years, all you care about is fitting in. So that's definitely something hard to grapple with. Uh, Vanessa, do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, for sure. So I guess like I live in the GTA in an area that is full of like ethnic minorities as well. Uh, so in elementary school, like it was like that was pretty diverse. Like with a lot of people from different from a different background than me. And so I was bullied for my cultural aspects when I was a kid. So like I'd bring my lunch, like we'd all bring our lunches to school and then I'd bring my lunch and then like people from other cultures would bully me for my food because it, it looked different from theirs. So like incidents like that kind of diminished my pride towards my culture a little bit like even though my parents instilled the importance of keeping my language Cantonese and the like corresponding like cultural aspects of it like food and like celebrations like Chinese New Year so now like now that I've like grown up and like like having been exposed to a lot of different cultures and also like Canadian culture, like I'm more proud of my own like ethnic culture now. So yeah. I'm very sorry that you had those experiences, but I'm glad um, you were able to kind of grow from them and um, kind of see the value in your culture now. So I'm glad you've been able to go on that journey. I think um, just one more answer we can take before we go on break. Angel, and do you wanna answer whether um, you kind of recognized um, a difference between you and your peers as a cultural or ethnic minority. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think that growing up, I always felt like home life and school life were just two separate entities. 
um because at home I was very like immersed in my culture like I only ever talked Tamil at home um at school it was like a very different world where I just I never really talked about my culture with my peers as I didn't have a lot of people who were from the same ethnic background as myself um so I think like I only really got into talking like having those two worlds like collide when I went to high school and I found like um groups of people who like again like spoke the same language had similar struggles to what I was facing um and I think that like that that kind of helped me grow within my own culture but it also is just so much of uh, being like Tamil being uh Sri Lankan is just like community and I feel like especially like over quarantine I feel myself kind of losing touch with my culture a little bit just because I don't have that that same kind of constant reminder of just like being together speaking the language like sharing food and like all the things that you would expect normally um but I'm also like seeing how um like in the Canadian culture just like I did want to fit in a lot like um I stopped listening to like traditional songs and stuff after a while because I was just like oh like no one else is really listening to this and people are talking more about popular music and it's just um I think what you said is true in your formative years you really do want to fit in and it shows right um I think now I'm in this weird kind of limbo where I'm trying to find out like as Anish said like how much of each culture is enough how much is enough of Canadian how much is enough of being like Sri Lankan Tamil and it's it's a weird place to be in but I think like um figuring it out is part of uh getting a better perspective and even understanding people like who are outside of your own culture and how much they might be struggling with that same sense of identity so like i, I definitely think it's a conversation with yourself worth having yeah i completely agree and it's interesting that you mentioned like how quarantine has affected your relationship with your culture i definitely relate um we had eid like a couple weeks ago and a big part of that is interacting with your family getting to see them sharing food with them definitely staying within your own house and just eating that celebratory food by yourself doesn't hit the same so i i completely understand so i think um that brings us to break and we'll resume this conversation in a minute Okay, maybe a bit shorter than a minute. Um, okay, so we were talking about how it feels kind of to be set apart from your peers in your environments and how that can lead to a little bit of an identity crisis. Um, so hopping off of that idea that it's not always so easy to embrace being different, I want us to hear what you guys feel are like the most pressing issues in terms of embracing multiculturalism in our greater society or in specific places like work like Bo mentioned earlier. Uh Yasaman, do you want do you have anything to share? Uh yeah, sure. Uh so I think my problem when I think a lot of people don't consider when it comes to different cultures is for me personally I came from Iran and during the period that I came it was there was a lot of tension just within our own communities and for me personally that pushed me out of my culture because um the dynamic was really tense where Persian families would kind of try to avoid each other for the sake of growing in Canada so in that sense I feel like compared to everyone else I am more distant to my culture because again when i moved here i also don't have any relatives in canada so my only connection to my culture is over facetime or whatsapp so for me i lost my identity probably earlier on than most people just because the it wasn't 
me immigrating to Canada, it's just the way we were all conditioned when we moved here. And that influenced us in a different way than I think most other countries um, that immigrated here faced. And I think that's honestly a really big problem because we have created a culture of competition based on what country you're from. Like if you're Persian, you're usually compared to your Persian peers. If you're Chinese, you're compared to your Chinese peers, not among everyone else. Like whenever I find myself in a room, I'm always looking for the other brown girl that I can compare myself to or the other brown girl that I can find, like make an alliance with to kind of survive through. So I wish instead of us trying to avoid or take advantage of each other, we would all kind of come together as one group. Because at least in my experience in university, when you have people from different backgrounds, they're exposed to different problems. They've lived through water problems. They've lived through droughts. They've lived through all these different things that maybe you're not exposed to if you live in the GTA. And with that, you can come with more creative solutions. So I feel like it's better to be able to be who you are, but don't have to look around to see if there's someone similar to you before you choose your position in a group setting. And I feel like that's something that we should work on because I think it's harder for our family's generation because they came here. I don't know about, I feel like most people that immigrated to Canada, they had to basically leave everything behind to come to Canada. So they had to make a really big sacrifice. So obviously they can't be a part of the changes that we need for future generations. So I feel like our generation noticing this, because just like how Vanessa mentioned the food thing, I had a similar experience, but I was lucky because I had two brown girls that stood up for me and they were like, what's the problem? And they kind of brought me to their corner. So if we're there supporting each other do this kind of, because I think we're like the changing face in Canada. So I think we all need to be there for each other, regardless of if we have similarities or not. I would say that's my perspective on it. I definitely see um, your point. The cultural in-grouping can definitely be a double-edged sword in that you have people to support you. You know those people will have your back. But also seeing yourself and other people can lead to you comparing yourself to them and how you perform in school or how you do in academics, things like that. I definitely understand that. Travis, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I, I have a slightly different perspective. I definitely agree with Yasmin. Um, so being Jewish, especially in the States and here, no matter what, I've always sort of, you can't really compare yourself because you don't really know if someone else is Jewish in the room, but I've always gotten a lot of hate for it growing up. And to me, I feel like the biggest challenge right now is just education. Um, like once when I was probably 16, I played on a hockey team with a kid from the deep South in Texas. And it was a genuine question. He, he came up to me and he was like, how are you Jewish if you don't have horns? And to me, it was like, I couldn't really get angry at him because he didn't know any better. Like it was what he was taught. And so then it was, it's now my job to educate him and hope that he goes back to his peers and educates them on just the, the stereotypes and the falsities and, and everything that, that sort of goes on. And I sort of see it everywhere. No matter where I go, I've always gotten something for it. And so I feel like the biggest thing is just education. If people don't know and all they're hearing is from sort of these older generations that have some stereotypes about other ethnicities, races, religions, then I feel like we're just perpetuating all the hate and there's no reason to do that if we just start educating people on what is actually going on and that we're all, we're all people and there's no reason to do it. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, ignorance, I, I understand. So sorry that happened to you. Ignorance, doesn't always seem to come from a malicious place, but it's definitely something that can only be tackled through education. So I agree with you there. Um, Angel, do you want to add anything? Um, yeah, I agree with Travis. Like education is really important. Um, like recently there was a discussion in UFT Scarborough about like passing uh, a bill for Tamil Genocide Week. And 
um, I don't know why, but to me, it didn't immediately click, like, why? I don't want to say why this is important, because of course it's important, but, like, it's just, because I had a conversation with one of my friends, who's also Sri Lankan Tamil, um, and she was talking about, like, oh, but how much is education actually going to help? Like, how much is it actually going to change, right? Um, but my parents didn't see it that way. Like, they were thrilled with it. They were, like, for them, it was just, like, their story is finally being told. They're finally going to get, like, a voice um, in a country like Canada, which they didn't think would ever happen. So I think that, like, education is really important. Like, for me, like, I knew the story of, like, what went on in my country when I was really young because um, my parents, like, immigrated a bit, like, late. So um, I was still a kid, and, like, it was, it was a bunch of different struggles that way. And I think that... Um, having education about like where people come from and just like even education about the stereotypes that people face it's really important because you don't know like when you offhandedly say things um like Bo mentioned about like how all um like Chinese workers won't complain like how that might be just so cutting um and like for me as well like I've had that experience of just like I don't feel like I'm able to speak up sometimes um as like a minority person about like what went on um because it's not really my story to tell so like i don't know i feel like it's it's very interesting to have like that perspective and i know that a lot of people probably have like those stories about their cultures that aren't publicly told as much um so yeah like i think education is really important yeah, I, I definitely agree with like what everyone's been saying about education and trying to educate people about specifically the stereotypes and where people are from. Um, I had an experience a few weeks ago when I was actually getting my vaccine. And um, so I, I speak Cantonese. Um, but what I find a lot is that Asian people, like people just recognize Asian people as a whole, despite whether or not you're from China, from Hong Kong, from the Philippines, Korea, just all of those different independent countries were just grouped together as being Asian. And I found that um, consistently throughout my life, um, just sort of ignorantly, people who are trying to, I guess, recognize that I'm Chinese, they say um, as a little introduction, like Ni Hao, but I speak Cantonese and Ni Hao is, is Mandarin. So I remember growing up, um, I, I wasn't fully aware of like the distinction between Mandarin and Cantonese. So when I was growing up and occasionally I hear the little remark of, of somebody greeting me as ni hao, I was confused. I was like, is that supposed to be a Cantonese term I've never heard before? Um, and now I've grown up and I do recognize that there is that distinction. And so when I hear, um, uh, so what I was saying with the vaccine is as I was getting it, um, the man who was administering it, he saw my full name and um, he's like, okay, Naomi C. Um, and I'm like, yes, that's my full name. And he, he just looked at me and he was like, ni hao. And I just remember kind of awkwardly giggling and like what Angel said about not really feeling like you kind of bring it up or like make it a whole thing. Um, it was it was just awkward to me. Um, so I think it, it is definitely like really important that people start to recognize that there is this distinction, at least in it, the Asian like subgroup that not everybody who's Asian <laughs> speaks Mandarin or says ni hao and yeah. Could I also add something to that? For sure. Because um, Naomi mentioned that. And one crisis I had when I came here is because people would be like, oh, like, what are you? And I would say I'm Asian because in Iran is in Asia. But the Western definition of Asia is very different because it's, again, based on the stereotypes and not actually like the geography of it. So that was also really confusing to me. And I believe it was last month that was Asian Appreciation Month and it's really frustrating when events like that happens because I'm so happy that Asian people are being celebrated finally because I feel like they do go through a lot of discrimination but it's also really frustrating because then there is people from Iran and Pakistan and India and that are never represented as Asians and we're kind of separated into our own group and it's really confusing because you're not asian you're middle eastern but what does that really mean then you come here and you say i'm canadian and they're like no you're not so i feel like 
the Middle East in that discussion completely gets washed over and ignored to the point where people come here and they completely lo lose their Asian um, culture. Because if we kind of talk, there are overlaps in our beliefs and values, but we've been separated just based on stereotypes. And I think it's really important to kind of be that representation that, hey, Asia's more than the little jokes you make here and there. It's a really big and like wide variety of people that have different cultures and values and you can't keep excluding groups and stereotyping them together. So I think that's a really important point I only brought up. No worries. So just to add up to what yes Yasman said, I relate so much because as a Middle Eastern, you really don't have a category to like fit in. You kind of like sit in the middle and it's like you're not like you know how they say like there's brown there's asian there's black there's white but then what does like an air person stand or like where does like a middle eastern iranian or like anyone from that middle part stand that's like unknown but like yeah that's pretty much it thank you guys for those insights i i definitely relate to that you have to kind of be the representation that you need to see yourself um, in that you kind of have to be the one to educate those like little microaggressions, but you also don't want to make waves or be that loud minority because that's an uncomfortable position to be in also. So it's really a tough position to navigate whether like, oh, do I laugh it off and just let this person think that what they said was just okay? Or do I risk being um, an aggressive person of color? It's definitely a hard um, place to navigate. Sorry, can I add something to that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, like regarding that point, one thing I saw was, uh, I think developing an accent, which was, uh, I think it, it was a really, really um, important part of, I guess, fitting into the, the culture. And I feel like, like now, like maybe, maybe now that we're in university and I see a lot of people from different cultures, uh, like an accent which people have from different places is uh, is regarded as normal, but I feel like in in middle school or like like elementary school people don't know as much. So there's this distinction of like like if you're from a different culture and the fact that you have a different native language than others whose whose first language is English, they they don't seem to appreciate the fact that like that's the reason why you speak it differently because you have not been exposed to the language as much. And I feel that it's especially hard, not for our generation, but like our parents, because my parents had a tough time, like in terms of like communicating, because even though it is multicultural and Canada is a cultural mosaic, there's always this like sort of um, untold hierarchy between like races. And that has, and I feel like the accent or like how you talk and communicate with people has a lot to do with it. So that has led, to some awkward encounters, which I think should be addressed. Yeah, thank you for that insight. Um, yeah, I definitely uh, understand what you're, uh, where you're coming from. It's kind of hard when, especially like what you were saying for like for our parents' generation where they do stand out so much when they do have accents and that's often met not with an understanding uh, perspective from other people, um, people that are fluent in English. So yeah, that's definitely a tough thing to navigate. I think to um, wrap up our session, just one last question I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, on more of a positive note, um, what do you think we as a generation, we were just talking about all of these issues that we face in multiculturalism. So what do you think we as a generation can do or contribute to strengthen our togetherness or multiculturalism in our society? Um, Noor, do you wanna share anything? Um, so I would say that we kind of learned how to take and also kind of represent different cultures depending on like how much we kind of got exposed to. So I would say like in like future generations, we're kind of able to teach because we know the issues and we kind of wanted to resolve them. So we're more likely to like get to a solution than our parents were able to, you know, because we're more experienced than they were. So it's like we're the generation that could cause the change and like educate people more, you know? Mm -hmm, for sure, uh, especially seeing as 
um, for a lot of us, those communication barriers are um, don't exist or like or a little bit easier for us. So definitely when it comes to that education, it's definitely easier for us to dispel that knowledge. Um, Anish, do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, for sure. I think as a young generation, we our goal here is to really push the needle uh, forward, even if it's just by a little bit. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I was just talking to like a coworker, and um, we, I think we were talking about Bollywood music, and she said something along the lines of, "Oh, isn't Bollywood music just ting to ting to ting?" And she's moving her head back and forth. Obviously, that's not it's not particularly terrible. I wasn't super offended, but the question is, to what extent have they reduced Indian culture or South Asian culture in general, since to a large extent, we can be considered monolith uh, to people who don't really understand the differences between Bangladeshis and Indians and Sri Lankans and Nepalis, Pakistanis. Uh, to what extent are we reduced to these stereotypes? And I think in just our daily conversations, we have to address these small things through little comments here and there to show that we are more than just simplistic Punjabi music or we're more than just our food. We're, we're a group of people who are working towards um, success. We're a group of people who want to dispel the different stereotypes that people have about us and that they don't truly understand or break down the misunderstandings they have about who we are as a group of people. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Bo, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, um, I think with, with regards to um, what Anish just said, mentioned earlier, uh, we should also, for ourselves to be able to like, learn the other cultures as narratives, learn the other persons as narrative of how, how they experience their life in Canada and try to be toler, like be as tolerant as you would want to be for somebody to be tolerant of your culture and yourself as a person. Um, in Canada, we have a history of um, of like five, three to five generations of like Canadians being discriminated against until they kind of get adapted into the bigger culture as a whole, whether it's Irish, Italians, the uh, Jewish people, etc. cetera. Um, it take, hopefully one day we can like shrink the amount of time that it takes for a different generation to be able to be considered as Canadian. Amazing, I completely agree. And last but not least, Naomi, do you wanna end us off for this question? Yeah, sure. Um, I think what's really important as the world starts to become more multi more diverse is that we do a lot of exploration and we try to really recognize or try to find an identity um, and also ensure that uh, we really understand ourselves because if we're telling other people that we need to, to educate others um, and sort of become our own representation of whatever culture we are embracing, whatever ethnicity we're embracing, it's important we know and feel confident uh, to actually educate others on that. Um, and one of the examples I gave earlier of uh, somebody being that stereotypical and, and just saying ni hao, um, probably something I could work on, which is would would just be to um, stand up for myself and actually um, tell that person or whomever that you know I'm not just uh, like not all Asian people are just isolated to being able to speak or understand ni hao and can Mandarin in general. So um, first and foremost, I would say as as the generation. Um, as everybody, younger people in general, are just growing up, we should really explore our, ourselves. And I completely agree. As like the upcoming generation, we need to be comfortable taking up space and being loud and correcting our friends, even when um, they're people that we're really trying to get along with, or even when we're trying to fit in in spaces, we shouldn't sacrifice our identity or our values just because of that. And I think that's a great note to end on. So thank you guys, thank you everyone for those insightful answers. And unfortunately that brings us to the end of the session for our Canadian multiculturalism events. Before we sign off, I'd just like to thank all of my friends for joining me here today. So thank you everyone.